Welcome to the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, where you'll learn the secret sauce, what it really takes to build a thriving mortgage business doing what you love, without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. And now, let's join your host, Doran Aldana. Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here, coming at you with another kick-ass episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we have a very special guest, the one and only Kristen Keith. And we're going to talk today about how she tripled her purchase production, tripled her purchase volume in just two short months without making a single cold call, I might add. So no cold calling, no chasing realtors, no you know cold calling the same 40 realtors every freaking Monday, none of that nonsense. No caveman methods from the dark ages, just a simple, elegant system that worked and that worked for her. And we're going to unpack her story. And I think you're going to be able to relate a lot with her story, especially if you're relatively new in the business or you're a veteran and you're kind of flatlining and spinning your wheels. Or if you're really concerned that you're sitting on a one-legged stool with 50% or higher of your business in the refi market and seeing the writing on the wall with rate increases every single week for the last month, month and a half, we've seen, well, I should say seemingly every single week, we've seen big bumps in uh, rates. And so the writing is on the wall, inflation is all over the news. And so some of you are shaking in your boots right now, and rightfully so, because you are sitting on that one-legged stool and you don't wanna be caught with your pants down, unequipped and ill-equipped to shift into the purchase market, scrambling to recoup 50% or more of your revenue. So regardless of where you find yourself, I think you'll find this very insightful and empowering, inspiring, motivating, and educational. So that being said, Kristen, thanks for hanging with me today. Absolutely. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, likewise to have you. And why don't we just start off to just share a little bit about your background, uh, your story, but maybe we can start with some of the background fundamentals of who you are, uh, where you're located, how long you've been in the business and what inspired you to get into the business. Why don't we start there? Oh, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> start there, yeah. You can give me the um, Coles notes version. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my name is Kristen. I live in Eugene, Oregon. I was actually born here. Um, so I'm very familiar with the area. I know a lot of people in these parts. Um, I have been in lending for over a decade, um, but I have only been doing mortgage for about four years. Um, what inspired me to get into the business is I love helping people. I just, I, I have a passion for helping people. Um, and this is a great way to help people. I mean, helping people buy a home, it's a, it's an amazing experience to be a part of that huge transaction in someone's life. So. Um, yeah. What, uh, what other questions do I, what am I supposed to yeah, say? That pretty much covered <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the main background of who you are. And, uh, I love that you have that passion to serve. I think a lot of people listening and watching can relate to that, you know, to be able to help people get out of the suck of renting and making their landlord rich and get into the pride and joy of home ownership and, to be able to get access to capital so they're no longer stressing and striving and losing sleep over uh, you know financial worries or whatever the case may be that inspires them to get a mortgage you know there's so much meaningful impact in what you do as mortgage professionals you're not just mortgage hawkers you're life changers and so I love yes. your heart connection to that and that's one of the reasons why you know you stuck with it after 4 years even in the struggle why don't we start with uh some of the things that you were going through as you uh, launched into this journey before you landed on Planet Prosper, uh, maybe, you know, some of the most painful, uh, maybe best way to say it would be the most perturbing or painful parts about doing it the hard way. What sort of things were you doing to try and get business and uh, what was not working about it and what was the impact of that for you in terms of, you know, your day-to-day -day life? Why don't we start there? Yeah. I mean, I think when you first get into the business, I mean, un unless you, I mean, I've had many amazing mentors throughout my life and career, but um, I think when you first get in the business, you think, okay, I just call as many realtors as I can and try to get them to give me their clients. 
Um, I mean, that's, that's essentially what, what you're doing when you, when you first start out, you don't really, you don't know that's what you're doing until you kind of get a grasp on it. But, um, I think, yeah, that's kind of what I felt like, okay, I'm just, I gotta somehow figure out how they're going to give me their clients over these other lenders that they have relationships with that they maybe have known for years that, um, are already giving them business and, and you kind of are like, you're like desperate. <laughs> almost. Right. Um, yeah, and it, it, especially I know at first it, it, it came across cause I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I, I know a lot about, about finances and, and finance and lending. I, I got that down. Um, mortgage is a whole different thing. I didn't really know what I was talking about. Like, yeah, I can calculate someone's income easy. Um, but then there's all the other things that you have to do to get a loan closed um, that I didn't know anything about. So it was, I, I know that that came across like, I just, I'm like, I got to feed my family. Where am I going to, where am I going to find these deals? Um, and I did, you know what most people do. I, I was at all of the networking events. I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy my time spent, but I think that your time can be spent better in other ways. <laughs> um, than just going out and trying to talk to as many realtors as possible and try to, you know, almost like you're not begging, but you know, you're borderline begging. <laughs> yeah. And even um, if you're not technically begging, if you feel like you're begging, you're basically begging because that feeling of groveling and being at the mercy of realtors and being at their, you know, every whim and feeling like, you know, you're being towed around by, uh, circumstance in the sense of you're a hundred percent commission. You eat what you kill, no safety net. You got a family to feed, you know, mama bear instinct is, you know, rising up and say, I've got to find a way to win. Losing is not an option period. And yet you're on a hundred percent commission. You eat what you kill. And now you got to find a way to drum up business, let alone actually convert it to the finish line so you can get paid. There's a quagmire of challenges there. And when one of those challenges, uh, on the entry level of getting deals in the door is, okay, realtor, I really need business. And I know no other way to ask other than just simply to ask, you know, do you have any business you can send my way? Mm -hmm. And feeling like you're at their mercy and you're basically just hoping they're going to throw you a bone. That is not a good feeling. Tell me about some of the emotional states you're going through as you're relying on cold calling realtors, groveling for business uh, from realtors and or doing the networking circuit, hoping that someone might throw you a bone or you might land some magical connection uh, through serendipity or, or just, you know, playing good luck at a networking event. Tell me about what that was like for you when you're a mama bear, really defiantly committed to feeding your family on 100% commission. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's nerve wracking. It, every single client that I did get, it, they all kept me up at night. I stayed up all night just worrying about getting the loan closed because it was like, everything has to happen. If it doesn't happen, then I got nothing. Right. <laughs> uh, there ain't going to be food on the table. Um, so obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's nerve wracking. It, it's anxiety filled. It's, I, I don't want to have to rely on somebody else. To, to feed me, to feed my kids. I have to be the one that's relied upon. I got to be doing the things to get the biz and, um, uh, you know, keeping it all up to make it happen. So obviously like trying to depend on somebody who maybe, you know, they don't know me from what they just met me last week. They don't care. They don't care. what They don't know what's going on with me. They're, they're not worried about whether or not they give me the loan or somebody else. Like, right. what does that matter to them? Yeah, um, your bills are not their business, right? No, no, <laughs> no. And, and, you know, quite frankly, like that's, it's, it's, um, uh, it's very, it's very shaky ground to stand on to, to begin with. Um, and, you know, there's people that go their whole career doing that. And I, I, I knew very quickly that is not something that I can, I can rely upon. I have to, you know, there's one thing I can rely on and that's the things that I do. And so yeah. figuring out, I, I needed some, some keys to unlock, figuring out what I could do to bring in the business. 
Yeah. So here you are now. Uh, you've been in the game for a few years, but you were kind of flatlining at uh, about two deals a month when we talked just, uh, I think it was December, early December, 2020. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, you're doing okay. You were surviving, but you know, based on your own admission, you certainly were not thriving and you're looking for answers because, you know, obviously you didn't get in this business to do two deals a month. Right. And yet, you know, all the painstaking time, energy and money you're putting in just wasn't producing the fruit you're looking for. And I think a lot of people listening and watching to the, watching this can relate to that. You know, the pain of the struggle, trying to get over the hump of just paying the bills and eking out a meager existence for many people is a formidable feat, let alone actually getting into the lush where you have discretionary income and you can take vacations and you can do cool stuff with your family and all that and just have some breathing room. So tell me about where you were right before we met, because obviously, you know, it kind of got to a point where it kind of hit this, uh, critical mass, if you will, and the pain of the problem such that you decided, okay, I need to find some answers. Speak to that a little bit in terms of, you know, what shifted for you in terms of the intensity of the problem such that you reached out for help? Um, I mean, I think that I, I'm definitely the type of person where I'm like, I, I like instant results. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, you know, the results haven't exactly been instant. <laughs> Um, I, I, I wanted, you know, I wanted things to, I want things to progress. I want to, I want to be successful. I want to have, um, longevity. And I, I knew that there was some problems that needed to be solved in order for that to happen. And for me to get to the next level that I'm trying to get to. Um, and, and obviously, you know, I, I was looking for all the ways to, to, to do that by myself (laughs) because that's, that's kind of, you know, that's what I do. And, um, and, but at some point it's like, Hey, hey self, <laughs> it's not really working out. <laughs> you got to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, Hey, this, what, what, what can I do differently? Um, yeah. that is not an easy and, thing to do when, uh, you know, you're putting in so much effort and the last thing you want to do is like, okay, do I really want to now invest money in some so-called solution outside of what I'm already doing. Who knows? Who knows if it's even actually going to work? Uh, how do I even know what the best solution is? Uh, everyone's hawking the bright, shiny objects and the silver bullets and the easy buttons. I mean, it's just so confusing. It's overwhelming. Uh, it's so convoluted. So you know, here you are now. You've tried cold calling. You tried networking. Uh, what else did you try? What were say the top three things that you tried that you realized just were not working? Oh, uh, you know, just like everybody else, I've, I paid for Zillow leads. Um, I have been, you know, on, you know, other people's marketing, you know, plans <laughs> for things like that. Um, and it's like, you know, you can throw money at things and if it's just money and there's nothing else, but like you're saying, you know, yeah, you know, you can invest in something, but if it's just that you're throwing money at something and, and there isn't really like, that's it, you're just going to give money to something. And what, what else, what else, something else has to happen. Like someone else's else's crap lead program, like Zillow, and you have no idea what's going to come back to you. You're just subsidizing. So maybe they might throw you a bone, maybe. Right. And, um, that's just, that's just very empty. Uh, there has to be action on, on, on my part, um, you know, for anything to work, there has to be action on your own part. You have to be able to, there, you know, things have to move forward, um, based on your action that you can't just throw money at something like a band aid. too. <laughs> so right. obviously, you know, I tried that, um, you know, partnering, doing marketing, not saying that there's anything wrong with that. And it's definitely something that's worthwhile, but, um, you know, just doing co-branding of, of different things. Um, all, all the things that you're, you know, you're supposed to do. I, I've done them all. I've done the open houses, uh, sat there, you know, giving out, flyer, a, giving out flyers and not, not gotten a single lead. Out yeah. of, you know, a whole day spent away from my family. And I think, you know, for me, it's like, I have two young children. I, I got to go to the basketball games on the weekends, soccer games, and I'm not missing it because that's 
I think that's what's most important to me. Um, then obviously just sitting there to do, hold somebody's hand through an open house. Um, like I said, not saying that those things aren't valuable, they have their place. Um, but if those are the only things that you're doing to, to get, to get leads, well, there's a, one problem with that is you have to either be there in person or you have to, like I said, or you're just throwing money at something that's empty and that's going to put a bandaid on a problem that's, Bigger. Yeah, and at the end of the day, when you you know pour a whole uh, eight hours, ten hours of work away from the kids into something that's completely fruitless, time that you can never get back, energy that you're pouring into something with fruitless toil, and then you know you're coming back to the kids with your tail between your legs, basically feeling like a failure, with this foreboding sense of oh crap, bills are coming in, they're not waiting for me to get my act together. You know, that's a, that's a real blowtorch under your buns to figure something out and figure something out fast. So for you, you've tried all these different things. It wasn't working. You were getting by, you were doing about two deals a month. You were doing better than you had the previous years. So praise the progress. You know, you got to the six figure level. Most people think, Hey, that's great. But you were stretching for higher ground. You just didn't want to settle for, you know, okay or good you wanted to go for great and i often say the mortal enemy of good or rather the mortal enemy of great is good because when you do good you're like hey i'm making six figures i'm kind of getting by i'm doing okay i'm doing better than most but if you just settle on your laurels for good you'll never stretch for higher ground to get great so Let's speak to that real quick. What was it that was in that fire in your belly that had you decide, hey, you know what? I'm not willing to settle for good. I'm ready to step up to great such that you reached out to us and decided to join us on Planet Prosper. What was that that motivation for you? Um, I just, I've always been like, I, I've never been one to just settle and say, hey, okay, this is good. This is fine. I can, I can maintain this. I've, I've never, I've never felt that way. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's something wrong with me, but I, I'm That's super competitive. Right. <laughs> I, I've been an athlete my entire life. So I've never, it, it, it's, you're, you're constantly, you know, striving to get better. Mm -hmm. and, and that's always been my mindset. Um, and so, you know, knowing, yeah, sure. Like, has it gotten better every year? Of course it has. That's, that's, and in, in, in me, I'm thinking that's what, that's what you should be doing. Not, that's right. not like anything great. Like don't get too excited about it. Like if you're not doing a little bit better than last year, then something's really wrong. Um, yeah. But that's, you know, I'm just, I, I wouldn't say that there's not really a level that I thought like, okay, if I make it here, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. I'll settle. I, I've never thought that. Um, I've always been like, it's always the next level. You know, you can always do better. You can always do more. Um, and, and, and that's something that I, 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 I want to leave a legacy for my children. That is something that they remember. Hey, we, our mom didn't settle for just, Hey, well, we can, you know, live in a two bedroom apartment. It's cool. Like what's wrong with that? Um, right. nothing, there is nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want, if that's your goals. Those aren't mine. Um, and it's something, you know, I want to instill in them. It's so I have to, I have to walk the talk. I have to keep going and, and keep striving to do better so I can, um, you know, hopefully leave that legacy for them. Yeah. And that's just who you are, you know, certainly baked into your identity. You're an achiever. Uh, you're like you said, an athlete that's always wanting to get better. And if we're not growing, you're dying. I think that is your mantra, whether you knew it or not. Uh, you have this insatiable desire to grow. And I think that's innate in humanity. I think if we're healthy, we want to keep growing. We want to keep expanding. We certainly don't want to stagnate because stagnate breeds rot and we know it. So there's something in our spirit that wants to keep expanding and growing. And that's a beautiful part of your nature that you've embraced as your identity. And that's one of the hardest things when you're struggling and you're spinning your wheels and you're banging your head against that glass ceiling when you are one of those insatiable uh, growth minded people like you are to be stagnated, banging your head against that ceiling. That is a real source of frustration. 
sleepless nights and 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 real pain. And especially when you contrast it against, you know, the legendary legacy you want to create for your kids and the life you want to create for them and the abundance and the freedom and the fun and the magic moments and all that. So can you speak to before we get into like, you know, the shift in you going from struggle city or you know, spinning your wheels at good, if, if we can call it that, and stepping up to great, shifting from struggle city to planet prosper. Before we talk about that transition, let's speak for a moment about the secret motivation in your heart around what was really driving you. Because we've spoken to a few of those elements, your desire to grow. You don't want to settle. You want to give your mm -hmm. kids a great life. You want to create a legacy. Yeah. What for you was the really... You know, if we could get to the nerve of what was really at stake for you and you stepping up your game from good versus stepping up to great, what would you say that was? If we could like peel back your cranium and really connect with your heart, what was the most potently uh, intense white hot fire burning desire that was at stake for you and staying stuck where you're at at two deals a month versus stepping up to that next level? What was it for you? Um, I mean... I think I, I've said this to you before. I mean, part of it is yes, creating that legacy for my for my kids, and um, but it's I, I want I want to be able to provide them opportunities, and I and I felt that if if I stay here, yes, that, you know, we could like, still have we could have a good life. Okay, good life, good, great, cool. But I want to I want to go beyond that. I want them to be able to have every opportunity that's available to them. Um, and, you know, just staying in the middle, it, it's not going to do that. It's not, it's not going to provide that, you know, I, I, and I want to come home. I want to be happy. I want them to, you know, have a happy mother um, and not think that, Oh, we don't, don't cross mom today. Like she's stressed about a, a deal that might not go through. Um, and trust me that there's, there's been those days. Yeah, mom is um, showing her fangs again. Stay away. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> um, and so not, I, I, and that's not what, you know, we have, like you said, there's a limited amount of time that we, and we can't get that time back. So, so when I'm, when I'm there, I want it to be happy. I want it to be fun. And I know that, you know, that life isn't all always happy and fun, but for the most part, like I want to be able to provide that, that life and those opportunities for them. Um, if there's anything I can do about it. Yeah. And it turns out there is. <laughs> there absolutely is. And especially when you start seeing other people that you know, you know, are no smarter than you, no better than you. And they're leaving you in the dust and they're making massive bank. They're kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubblegum, crushing it. You know, we all see this, especially now in the midst of this mortgage gold rush. We're seeing people make crazy bank because there's all this low hanging fruit. And, you know, if you're there sitting on the sidelines while other people are kicking ass and living your dream and you have that competitive nature and you want to win and you want to win for your family, it's tough when you're coming to the ocean of abundance with a little thimble and everyone else is bringing the dump trucks, you know, it's like, what the heck, what's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this out? So here you were then December, early December, 2020, you reach out to me, we have a real deal, honest, raw conversation about where you're at, what's at stake if you stay there and, you know, what's the most potently painful part about continuing on the trajectory you were on, doing okay, doing better than most, making six figures, but in a rather precarious position, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of aggravation, a lot of stagnation, and a lot of stress without seeing the real upside fruit on it. And now, Doran's like, okay, let me show you the pathway to really prosper. And we show you that path. And of course, it comes with a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself to get a ticket to Planet Prosper. You know, everyone wants to be a champion. Not everyone's willing to do what it takes to become a champion. So now you're crossing the bridge of fear into a new land called Planet Prosper. And everyone has to cross that bridge. And no one's going to put a gun to your head or drag you across that bridge of fear. That's always on us and us alone. Tell us about some of the fears you faced before pulling the trigger and saying, screw it, let's do it. Speak to that for a moment, because I think that'll really speak to 
what it takes to create a breakthrough for anyone and anyone who wants to create a new life, an abundant life, an absolute unprecedented breakthrough result. It's always going to be outside of our comfort zones. So speak to that for a moment, if you would. Yeah, I mean, all all of the things, I, I, it's like, do I have enough time? Do I have enough money? Do I have enough capacity? Do I have enough resources? Do I have enough inside of me to just, you know, get up and do it? And, and, and um, all of those fears, like, you know, the things that everyone struggles with all the time. Am I, am I good enough? Am I capable enough? Um, yeah all of those things. I, I definitely, you know, those were things that were in my mind at the time. I mean, those were things that, that were making me, I mean, we're coming at the end of December of uh, the first, the, the COVID 2020 year. So yeah, I, I had all of the uncertainties that other people were feeling, I was feeling, um, and then magnified with, well, then, I mean, how, what's what's next? <laughs> like right, no right. one knows. You know, after we we just experienced this this last year um, with uh, a whole new world of of things that were, you know, everybody had to learn a brand new way of doing life. Um, those were things that were you know on my mind. It's it's just you know I <laughs> I've mentioned you know we got to do Zoom school. It's like I got to get the kids on the school, and that takes up time and energy um in addition to all of the other things that are going on so i mean yeah i was like am i am i going to be able to to do this is it even yeah. possible talk about a cluster of uncertainty uh, a quagmire of uh, circumstance that's pressing in on you between just you know our own baked in nature as human beings to feel like, you know, imposter syndrome, am I enough, inadequacy, uh, do I have the resources, and then COVID on top. In the face of all that, you said, screw it, let's do it. And you decided to, you know, invest in yourself in that moment of decision. If there was one thing, one thing that had you decide, screw it, let's do it, and push past your fear and into your dream, what would that one thing be for you? I, I think the the one thing is is I, I was just honestly I was like what do I what do I really have to lose that that's I, I was like I really I mean I I have what a little bit of time investment a little bit of money investment I I mean I've done less for more and more for less so I'm like I don't really have anything to lose I think it, I need to invest in myself to prove to myself that I'm serious about getting to the next level. Mm. Yeah. And there's a very unique way of seeing it that is absolutely inextricably linked with the way of the champion that I don't want people to overlook. So often people want maximums by doing minimums. You know, they want to be fit, rich and happy, but most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why? Because they want maximums by doing minimums. You know, they want to be able to be chiseled by laying on the couch, eating Twinkies, <laughs> right? Watching over. That ain't going to work. And one of the things that has made you successful in our program and certainly has been a backbone of your success through your life, I believe, Kristen, is your willingness to pay the price and not haggle against the price of success, but to embrace it willingly, joyfully, and be all in, in it to win it. That's the mindset of a champion. So you decided to, you know, say, screw it, let's do it. You landed on Planet Prosper. Tell us about some of the things that you learned in the program or that you were being prescribed in the program to do that you're like, really? You're really asking me to do that? You really think that's going to work? What the heck did I just invest in? Um, okay, here we go. A little bit of like, you know, not not resignation, but maybe a, a tad bit of skepticism or a little bit like, whoa, that's out of my comfort zone. Speak to that a little bit, because I think that'll reveal a little humanity in diving into something new and being stretched. I will say, OK, so um, the first our first conversation, we talked about um, the I had a, a sticky note about it and I have left it here for the past two months about doing the um, magic morning routine. and. Um, 
I, I had heard, I had heard about it before. So it wasn't like this was like some brand new crazy information. Um, but I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm going to really actually try it this time. I had not, I had tried it. I was not really, but kind of once before, but I had no accountability. So I just bagged it up when I was, you know, wanted to hit snooze one day. The key um, word there is try, right? Do a try. Song, I mean, right? it, mm, <laughs> well, I always say there is no try. You're either doing or not. So if I say try, then it's, I didn't do it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, but so that I was like, okay, you know, like I've heard of this before and, and I, I really did not, um, think that that would do anything for me in my being successful. I did not think that that would be a key to being successful at all. Um, and, and I, I'm not really sure why I just was like, why would, why would this work? This doesn't, it's too simple. What, is, it's, what does it's it have too... to do with me doing a loan? Come on, yeah. give me the fancy stuff. Give me the advanced stuff. Give me the whiz bang black belt stuff. I don't want to start with the white belt stuff. Give me the advanced stuff I've never heard before, right? Yeah, like I'm gonna, you know, cast a spell on some real estate agents and get me get them to give me a million deals a year. That's what I, that's what I was hoping for. Um so that was that was one, and then um I have had a complete total 180 mindset shift um, since doing our uh, Monday morning calls and um, doing the mindset training that we did on those. Um, I feel like at the beginning I was like, yeah, you know, it is what it's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm here. I'm, uh, I'm a, a student. I'm an active listener. I'm like, okay, I'm here. But I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't bought into it at all. Not, mm -hmm. not at all. And I am on the complete other end of the spectrum today. I am like, I want to do mindset training every single day of my life for four hours, five hours a day. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing how you know, something that seems so basic and blase and unsexy, like mindset training, is really at the heartbeat of success in any walk of life. I mean, you look at someone like Conor McGregor, who's the highest paid, you know, one of the highest paid athletes in the world, uh, just a, a step or two behind Floyd Mayweather. And he'll tell you he spends more time training his mind than he does his body. And he's a professional athlete, right? So there's a lot to it because you know, how we show up in the world in terms of our resourcefulness, our confidence, our certainty, our swagger factor, our ability to really show up and not pull punches, but really swing for the fences is absolutely inextricably linked with how we think and how we think is inextricably linked with how we feel and how we feel is how we show up. So it's an, an interesting thing that you mentioned that because we don't market mindset. When, when we talk on the phone, we've never talked about mindset because people get the gag reflex. They're like, I don't need mindset. I already got a freaking good mindset. I don't need that shit. I just need some good marketing. Give me some good scripts. Give me some good strategy. I don't need some freaking mindset. My mindset's all point, right? Yes. But, yes. but little do they know, it's what they don't know that they don't know that holds them back. So I appreciate your vulnerability and uh, your forthrightness to share what it was like for you as you started to get stretched into a new way of thinking and being and performing. Tell us about some of the surprising results you got as you started to dive into Planet Prosper and implementing the formula and doing the work. You started at around two deals a month in early December. Tell us about some of the shifts you've been getting in terms of results since then. It took about two months to culminate and, and, and put things into place. But, you know, tell us about how things have shifted in terms of results since then. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that um, you did say when, when we first started talking is that, that realtors would be reaching out to me. I, you know, I kind of did not believe that either. I was like, right. We'll okay. I've been doing this for a few years. Like, I'm like, we'll see. Like, Yes, it it happens every once in a while, but not like I didn't think like the floodgates are going to open and they're just going to be blowing my phone up. But I mean, essentially, that is what happened. Like 
when I, I mean, I had, I had an agent call me today and was like a, a very, a top producing agent in my market. Um, and they, first of all, they text me and asked if we could have a conversation and then we did. And, uh, they were like, you know, I, I have all these listings and, um, whenever I get my sign calls, I'll be calling you. I'm going to be hooking them up with you. Um, and, and it's like, I, I did, I was just, I did nothing. I, I mean, I was on a meeting and, and he, he texted me and asked to, to speak with me. Um, so that's a, a long way from going to networking events and begging for deals. <laughs> Especially when it's a top miles producer, away, right? Versus the bottom feeders that do like two deals a year. It's a big difference when you got a top producer doing 20, 30, 40, 50 plus transactions a year calling you saying, Hey, I want to send you my buyers. That's a game changer. And so I'm curious, what was the difference that made the difference that had him reach out to you versus, you know, when you were living in struggle city, uh, doing it the hard way, what was the difference that made the difference? Um, well, I mean, he's getting, Lots of information from me via automated emails, text messages, um, my marketing on Facebook. You know, it's a whole, there's a holistic approach um, for marketing. And, and that includes to, to realtors. And so I think, and, and they, they like that. They're like, oh, I'm seeing your name everywhere. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's, it's great for them too. It's like, oh, I'm going to work with you. <laughs> like, it's, it's just a totally different perspective instead of, like I said, you know, you're going up to someone, you're like, they don't know you from anybody, never heard of you. Like, why the heck would I give you a deal? <laughs> right. Versus so, this person sending me information every week. They're sending me text messages. They're helping me find ways to market to my, my sphere. Um, so all of those things are, you know, it's like, yeah, you're, you're actually bringing value to the table. So I want right. to work with you versus you're just over here trying to leech a deal. <laughs> Be, being a lone leech. Yeah. yeah. That generally doesn't work very well. You guys probably can relate to that intimately, right? Chasing after realtors, offering great rates, good service, throwing me a bone. The default setting is, oh, here comes another lone parasite. Here's another lone leech. And so you want to have an attraction-based approach versus a prospecting-based approach. Prior to landing on Planet Prosper, Kristen, you were doing the prospecting approach, the cold calling, the chasing, the groveling, the begging. And then we <laughs> shifted things so that you're now in the power position. We shifted things so now you have such a kick-ass, unique value proposition. The realtor needs you more than you need them. We shifted things so now you're attracting versus chasing. And let's talk about the results. It's been two months, essentially, you know, January, February has set up your results now for March. You were doing two deals a month when we talked in December. Where are you now in March? How many partners have you landed? And what, in, what impact has that made in your production? So I have um, partnered up with three new agents and I have um, seven set to close for March. Um, Ooh, which is, uh, it will be a record month for me. Um, awesome. So I'm very excited about that, especially, you know, coming off of it, it's like what's been happening in January and February, rates have been going up. And um, so to be having a, a record month in that environment um, definitely speaks to what's been happening over the past couple of months. Um, and I, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited to see what happens next. Um, it's, it's definitely just the beginning. So yeah, it's yeah amazing. You're, just get, you're just getting warmed up, sister. You haven't seen nothing yet. You did not you lie done, to me. Just begun. You did not Imagine lie to me. That. You, you, you were, you were right. And you, <laughs> you spoke the truth. Imagine that. I got it the actually results freaking to works, prove it. Right? it actually Imagine works. that. <laughs> it's not just hype after all. Imagine that. And so let's talk about kind of where you're at now. You're having a record month in the face of raising in interest rates, not just a little blip, but I mean, we've had some significant steps up over the last month and a half. And you're still in the face of that having a record month 
You got three top producers doing 20 plus transactions a year. Uh, what's your highest producing partner? How many transactions do they do a month, uh, a year rather? The the one that actually I was talking about that called me today, I I mean I think he does about eighty a year. That's awesome. You think about that. Even if half of those are buyer ends, I mean that's a lot of potential referral power sending your way. Not to mention you expanding the size of their pie so that they have more to bring to you by virtue of you expanding their business and the number of buyers they're able to squeeze from what they're already doing already. So that's amazing. That's very, very exciting. What are you most excited about in your life, in your business right now as you've just you know, stepped into a whole new realm of profit producing power in your business and you know you're just scratching the surface of the surface? What are you most excited about right now? Um. You know, I'm most excited about the the fact that I know that I'm going to continue to attract um, more top producing agents that are people that I want to work with, that are people that are aligned with me. Um, because now that I am clear on on who those people are, what they look like, um, what they do, what they what they like, what their clients are like, um, I, I'm able to. I, I know. I'm like. I know everything's. You know, everything's going to be as smooth as can be because of the fact that I, I have the mindset due to all of the good mindset training and that's not going to stop. That will continue. Um, you better believe I know it. that I'll continue to attract um, those types of partners that are going to be people that I love to work with and, and will be loyal and um, we'll have fun and make lots of money together. I love it. And the big themes that I'm hearing in that, that I just absolutely adore and makes my heart sing, Kristen, is love, fun, ex, you know, excited. There's all these beautiful elevated emotions. And that's the fruit of you doing your mindset work. That's the fruit of you showing up and shining and, and really being the best, being the best version of yourself for yourself, for your kids, for your partners. And that's why they're working with you. Yes, you've got wicked marketing, wicked value adds, wicked tools to help them close more deals with less effort, all that good stuff. But the real reason why they're working with you is because you are like a light in a very dark uh, cave and they want more of your light. You're like that radiant light on a dark summer's night that attracts the moths to the light because <laughs> the light shines so bright that it's an attractive force that just wants to be Bast in. It's the energy of awesome that top producers want to be a part of. They want to be in your energy orbit. And then, of course, you're doing the activities that are required to add that unique value to be irreplaceable and indispensable. But without the energy of awesome that you bring to the table, it nullifies the value because you would be a battery drainer versus a battery charger. So I just want to acknowledge you for how you've been showing up in the program, coachable, committed, doing the work, uh, being a voracious and coachable student, doing the, the work that, you know, most people would just say, ah, mindset work, fooey, and uh, that's woo-woo stuff, but you're doing it. And obviously <laughs> now you're a massive believer in it because you see the fruit from it. And what would you say is the biggest change in your life that's made the biggest difference for you now that you're in this new energy and you're, you know, riding this, this wave that continues to escalate upwards. And you know, you're just getting warmed up on that. We're just scratching the surface of the surface. What's the biggest difference in your life when you look back to where you were in December, if you were to contrast those two worlds you were living in, what's the biggest difference for you? I would say, and I mentioned this when we first, before we got on the live, when we first got on the call, I just, I feel, I feel a sense of peace. I'm not, I don't feel worried about the future. Mm. Um, mm. And in December, I, I felt worried about the future. I felt so much uncertainty. I felt um, like I was drowning. I mean, that's a, that's a, the best way I can put it is I felt like I was drowning in, in a sea of doubt, <laughs> anxiety, and worry. Um, and today even, you know, got all, all the, all these deals going and, and everything's, you know, it's going smooth. Everything feels, it feels peaceful. And I'm like, I, I don't know how I'm a mortgage loan officer right now, because that doesn't seem like it's supposed to be a peaceful job, but, um, 
because of all the the shifts I've made in in what I'm doing with my business um, and mindset, I, that's how I feel. I can't describe it any other way. I'm not lying. This is this is true. Thing. This is real life. Yeah, no, I can see it in your face. I can see it in your body language. It's so congruent. It's who you are. You're sourcing it from within. And when one discovers the master key to peace, power, and poise from within, there ain't nothing stopping them. And you are an embodiment of that. And it's just glorious and beautiful to behold and to see the evolution and the blossoming that uh, I've been able to, you know, have a front row seat to over the last two and a half months with you, Kristen. And I'm so excited that we ain't done. We've just begun and stoked to have you in champions club. You know, we're going to just take it to a whole other level, take you stratospheric to a whole other level. We're going to get to the point where, you know, the production you're doing now, seven deals a month seems worlds away from what you're doing as you ascend into that next level, where we're going to take your monthly production that you you know used to do uh, just a couple months ago. Now we've made that we basically tripled what you did three months ago, and we're going to do that again. Where what you did this month, we can triple that again and remain in that peace, remain in that joy, remain in that beautiful elevated emotion of gratitude and enjoying and savoring the journey while getting a whole lot more done delegating a whole lot more to a rock star top talent team and just having a ton of fun doing what you do best and getting the best to do all the rest. And uh, I just feel super blessed to be on that journey with you. So just want to honor you for being that receptive and very much coachable, uh, committed student that you've been and emptying your cup so we can fill it with your dream. I'll tell you what, this right here, this feeling of knowing that this is going to be a trajectory shifter in your entire life, a trajectory shifter in the difference that this will make for your kids and your kids' kids, the difference in you being the mom you're called to be, the provider you're called to be. Man, that gets me fired up. So just feel so, me so blessed too. to yes. be that catalyst for you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, thank you. So if you guys are listening, watching this, and you're like, man, I'm loving Kristen's story. I can see a lot of myself in her journey. I can relate to much of her plight. And if you're in that place that Kristen was uh, early December 2020, where she was in Struggle City and she was sick and tired of living in that place in stress in fear and uncertainty and worry and sleepless nights, and you're in a place where you just know you're capable of more. You know that you're called to more. And you know there's something deep down in your heart that is calling you to step up and to play a bigger game. But you just need clarity, direction, guidance, a proven plan that actually works, that doesn't involve cold calling and chasing realtors. If that's you and you're on 100% commission, you're making 80 basis points or higher, and you're defiantly committed to exiting Struggle City once and for all and landing on Planet Prosper and living in the life you know you're called to live, a life of abundance, of freedom, of joy, peace, power, and poise, all that good stuff, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we'll lift up the hood on your business. It's exactly the same launching pad that Kristen took. She's like, hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's check this out. See what these guys have. Let's have a conversation. That's all it is, just having an honest conversation, hopping on the phone, lifting up the hood on your business. We'll look at where you're at now in your business, where you want to be in your business. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we'll show you what, what that looks like. Just like we did with, pardon me, with Kristen. And if not, frankly, we will be the first to advise you to pass on our services and perhaps recommend something else. But either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun along the way as well. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, I invite you to go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book yourself into our calendar. We'll hop on the phone. We'll have a chat and we'll see what we can do to help you create a breakthrough in your business. So go ahead and do that now. It's the very first step in the process to explore what it really takes to create a massive transformation and breakthrough in your business. And to get out of fear, to get out of stress, to get out of overwhelm, and to get into you being the best version of yourself and creating a legendary legacy and creating a life of freedom. 
So I invite you to do that if indeed you meet the criteria I mentioned earlier. And for those who are on the fence, Kristen, who are like, I don't know, uh, you know, everybody's hawking the bright, shiny objects. Everyone's hyping up all these easy buttons. I don't know if this is really worth my time to hop on the phone for an hour. They're probably just going to try and close me or do some high pressure sales tactics or whatever. What would you say to someone like that who's kind of on the fence and is kind of feeling a sense of uh, fear or resignation or cynicism or skepticism, but they really want to create a breakthrough in their their life and they're they're sick and tired of where they're at? What would you speak to for someone like that? I mean, I just want to say the the door in line, screw it, let's do it. Um, <laughs> that's what you should say to yourself. Look yourself in the mirror. I mean, if you really honestly are are looking for a holistic approach to changing your business and, and trying to find some peace and, and, and gain some success, um, I would not hesitate to invest in, in yourself. You're investing in yourself when you when you join this program. Um, so if you feel that you're worth it, then, then you should definitely, definitely do it. Awesome. I love that. And if you don't feel you're worth it, then obviously staying in struggle city is probably the place you need to be until you get to the point where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you rise up inside yourself and say, I am worth it. Life is too short. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is a one shot deal. Screw it. Let's do it. And at that point, obviously you'll be ready for a breakthrough, but just want to thank you, Kristen, for your time. I just, uh, I really appreciate, uh, the beautiful, being that you are, you are a bright light and you make such a difference in so many people's lives, your clients, your partners, your kids, and your light is only getting brighter because you're doing the work. So thank you for being you. Yes. Thank you so much, Doran. I appreciate you. Awesome. Likewise. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with us. I've been hanging here with the one and only Kristen Keith, and this has been a exploratory interview on how she tripled her volume in the purchase market in just two months without making a single cold call. And again, if you wanna learn more about how she did that, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with us guys. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll be right back at you with another episode very, very soon. This is Dorn Aldana from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.